let's talk about different elements that makes a network reliable. One of the things we want out of our networks is fault tolerance. We want our networks to be fault tolerant. And at any given time, pieces of equipment can fail, uh, lines can fail, and then what will happen? If your network connection goes down, that could be lost business. And so we want some sort of systems in place that allows if systems break down or if pathways fail, then it'll be rerouted and it will be, and it will go to different equipment. And so the, the networking will continue to happen. So this is fault tolerance. Fault tolerance is the ability for a system to be able to heal itself. And we do that in many different ways. An example of this would be is we might have dual equipment that's operating side by side. In this example right here, we've got two routers that are operating side by side. So if one of those routers fail, then the other one will pick up in its place. Perhaps even within that equipment, we have multiple power supplies. So if power goes out on one, the, uh, the uh, piece of equipment will still be up and running. Or perhaps we've got multiple connections or NICs within that. And so if one of those NICs fails, then that equipment will still run. So we'll have uh, certain equipment, we'll have fault tolerance within the equipment. And then we have multiple pieces of equipment that it duplicates their efforts as well. So if one fails, the other one will pick up. So another thing we'll have is we'll have multiple pathways. So you'll see here between the two networks that I have here, I've got two different connections that go different, different, different directions on here. And so what happens is let's say there's a backhoe and it digs up one of these lines and this path goes down, this system is able to heal itself and redirect the traffic a different route. And so pathways could be duplicated. And so that way, if one of the pathways fails, then it goes to another, uh, another route. Similarly, whole systems can go down. So an ISP could, the connection could drop. And so we could have a backup connection that allows us to get to the internet in another way and create a connection in another way. And so we may have different backup connections as well. So here's an example of a, a network that has uh, different connections to it. So if one of those connections fails, it has different equipment that's duplicated. So if one of that piece of equipment fails and when within the ISP, they have redundancy within the ISP. So that way, if a pathway fails, then it can take a different pathway to, to keep the, our systems up and running. So that's fault tolerance, the ability to heal itself if something goes awry. We also need our networks to be scalable. Scalability is the ability to be able to expand or possibly contract as demand grows or shrinks. Generally, we see demand grows, but there are times when demand will shrink and we need to be able to add more equipment or add more bandwidth or add more capacity to our systems or possibly once again, be able to subtract that or take away from that, depending on what the demand is. So that's scalability. And we do, do we, we do that in two different ways. We can either scale out or horizontal, or we can scale up or vertical. The idea behind scaling up or vertical is being able to expand the capacity of a single line or expand the equipment, add more resources to specific equipment. So an example is let's say there's contention on this router right here and that router is not able to handle the full load. And so we need to be able to increase the capability of that router by get, possibly giving it more RAM, more CPU, maybe switching it out all in entirely somehow giving more resources to that. Or let's say the problem is the bandwidth and maybe we need to go to our ISP and order more bandwidth from the ISP. And so that, that could be our weak point and we may need to scale or grow that bandwidth. Uh, and so there's scalability comes in a lot of different forms. That's scaling up. Scaling out would be increasing the number of routers that we have or the number of connections we have. The, uh, and so that would be a scaling out example. Another way we do 
this is with like servers, scaling up would be adding more CPU or RAM to that server. Scaling out would be add more servers if it's in, in front of a, or in back of a, a load balancer and the load balancer is distributing among those servers. So that's scaling, that scalability that is being able to scale out or adding more of a certain resource or scale up, adding resources to what's already available. Then we have QoS or quality of service. Quality of service is the ability for a network to prioritize certain traffic over other traffic. For instance, let's say we have, we have some laptops and some computers on our network here that's going across the network. They could be browsing the internet, they could be downloading files, and that information is going to get to from one point to another, but it's not usually critical that that information gets to those computers in a timely manner. Whereas a, a phone conversation that's happening right here is very important. Or perhaps you do have some sort of conferencing that's happening on one of those computers. And so that voice and video is a little more sensitive to delays within the system. And so we wanna make sure that those, that traffic that's coming from a, some sort of VoIP system or some sort of conferring system is prioritized over, over other traffic because it's important for that to get on to the other side very quickly. If it doesn't and it gets out of order or if there's delays, then we that's when we hear bad quality sound or that's when we get some artifacts or some uh, degraded uh, signals and images in our conferencing. And so we need to prioritize that over the other traffic. So when it hits these different systems, it gets labeled that this needs it is a higher priority and needs to be dealt with sooner. And so that way it gets over to the other side sooner. So that's quality of service. And the fourth element is security. Security is our ability to get information from one point to another securely. Secure, securely means a few different things. Number one, confidentiality is important. And so there's gonna be a lot of sensitive stuff on business networks and out there that we don't want other people to be able to see. So confidentiality has that, it means that uh, if we're keeping our network secure, they're not gonna be able to open up that information, somehow get that information in transit, be able to open up and view it. So that's confidentiality. We're also concerned about integrity. Integrity is that information doesn't change from point A to point B. So no one can go in there and start manipulating or changing data or perhaps even corruption along the way for, with equipment. So that way when it gets to the other side, the data remains intact and nothing has changed that data. It's in its, its original form. Don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you. And then finally, uh, it is the availability. That's the uh, make sure that no one can go in there and stop that data thing be from being transferred. So make sure that it gets from point A to point B without somebody coming in and stopping that, that data from being transferred. So there you have it, four elements, fault tolerance, scalability, quality of service, and security are all needed to make sure that we have reliable networks.